Hello all, my name is Krish Naik and uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, just a couple of days back, you know, I had taken a live session on resume reviews and uh, just within a time span of one hour, 30 minutes, I was able to review 200 plus resumes. Some of the resumes were able to definitely impress me you know, and uh, some resumes and most of the resumes, more than probably 50 to 60 percentage of the resumes were following the same mistake. Okay. So in this particular video, I'm going to talk about some important things that you should definitely write in your resume, you know, and what all things you should definitely focus at. Nowadays, many companies are specifically using ATA system to probably scan and select the resume. If you also want to make sure that your resume always clears at least that ATS, ATS round, you know, so what all things you really need to focus on. Now, this particular video is really important because trust me, because resume is something, you know, it is just like a tool that talks about yourself to the outside world. You know, nobody knows about you, right? So that is the reason we specifically create resume in this job industry, because at least you should get an idea like what I'm or what I'm actually doing, you know? So in this specific video, let's go ahead and discuss. I created somewhere around five to six points. You really need to focus on that and what all things you really need to write over there. I will be talking about it. Okay. So let me go ahead and share my screen. So here, uh, I've written five points. Uh, so let me go ahead and write my sixth point over here. Okay. So this is my sixth point, which I'm writing in another color because this is really important goal and outcome. Okay. Now, first of all, Definitely, uh, when we talk about ATS system, ATS system, right? And if you know that I've also created multiple projects of creating this ATS system with the help of generative AI models like LLM models and all. Now, in many companies, you know, whenever a specific hiring is actually done, you know, so they basically use some kind of ATS system so that the resume gets automatically picked based on the job role. Okay. So first of all, whenever you specifically look at the job role, you have to probably see what kind of roles and responsibilities they are actually asking for, you know, so job role, you need to focus on the roles and responsibilities. So this is the most important point, right? Let's say I have a requirement for NLP engineers. I have a requirement for computer vision developer. Please go ahead and see the jobs and roles and responsibilities. Okay. Then. When I talk about skill sets, you really need to write the skill sets that you are good at. Okay. This is really important. Whatever skill sets you have specifically worked, you have experience in that. Let's say I have experience in working machine learning algorithms, generative AI models, LLM models, I build end to end projects. I am very good at databases. So I'll just go ahead and write those specific skill sets. I'm good at Python programming language. I am good at working with fast API. Let's say so those are the skill sets and you have to make sure that you put those kind of specific skill sets. Okay. That is really important. Many people, what they do is that they write skill sets separately. <coughs> they write tools that they specifically use separately, like IDs, VS code, you know, all those specific things they actually write. So skill sets are really important. I, I, I don't care like what kind of template you specifically follow. Okay. Template you specifically follow. It's okay. You can follow any resume template as per your wish. Okay. But the first and foremost important thing is that about your skill sets, this skill sets will definitely help you to clear from the ATS, you know, ATS system. So you need to write the necessary skill sets, which you specifically know. Now that does not mean that, Hey, I'm going to go ahead and write this hundred skill sets over here. No, right. What are the important skill sets that actually matters to you? You have to write, let's say that you write hundred of hundreds and hundreds of skill sets. You may clear the ATS system, but after that it will become very difficult because you've written so many things over there because the same resume will go over there, right? So skill sets is really important. Be very precise with respect to the technologies that you are writing. Let's say I am very interested in computer vision. I'll write NLP, I'll write generative AI, I'll write data science, machine learning, because I have worked on all these things and whichever probably interviews I go, I'm very much comfortable with that. You can probably go ahead and ask me, right? And I would be able to answer. Okay. So that is the first important thing with respect to the skill sets. Now coming to the second thing, which I saw that people lacked. Okay. The roles and responsibilities. Okay. Many people like 
See guys, uh, data science now, it's like in a level, many advanced things are actually coming in this world. Now, still in the roles and responsibilities, will write, hey, I did feature engineering. I probably cleaned the data. I annotated the data. It will not work. Okay. You have to probably talk about the roles and responsibilities that you have specifically done in the project. That is fine. Okay. Additionally, you have to talk with respect to the complete project implementation. Okay. In the complete project implementation, what all things you specifically did, which are modules you actually developed, you know, how you work as a team, how, what was your specific role in the team that all things needs to be included. Right. And that is what I have actually seen. See, 90 percentage of the people have written good things about the roles and responsibilities. They're able to clarify those things like what main things they actually did in that specific project or in a company. If they are, it, if it was their personal project, what all things they actually did. I liked about that, you know, but still in the 10 remaining 10 percentage of the resume, what I saw is that they've just written one liner. Okay, I've worked as a data scientist, data analyst, three plus years of experience. I did data processing and done. Almost like two to three sentences and it is very much clear with respect to the roles and responsibility. So, see, if I am a recruiter, you know, I have recently recruited some freshers. What I did, did is that I just saw the resume. I told them to build something, you know, because they've written those kind of skill sets over there. They have written those kind of roles and responsibilities over there. And just... I gave them a task and they were able to complete it, right? So how I am coming to that particular conclusion because they had written that information in the roles and responsibilities. Okay. Now coming to the third point, which many people lacked is with respect to the project explanation. When I talk about project explanation, I'm not talking about module explanation. I'm talking about the end to end project explanation. Okay. End to end project explanation. So you may talk about what clouds you specifically use. And I would suggest guys again, whether it is a capstone project, whether it is, it is a time pass project, always do it as end to end. And the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the saddest thing was that as soon as I probably just see the project name, right? I just see the project name and I know that, okay, it's a, it's a very basic, simple project. There are two resumes that I actually seen. One, the person has done some kind of capstone project. He did end to end. But just by seeing those information that he had written in that, right, I felt that it is a very basic project. The same project was written by someone else in his resume in a better way. Okay. Now, when they write in a better way, they have said that, okay, they have used EC2 instance to do the deployment. They have used GitHub Actions to probably complete the end-to-end -end project over here for the automation, right? The first person had missed this kind of information, right? So the project is same. But this kind of information actually makes your project explanation looks better, looks good when compared to the previous one. Because I, <coughs> if I probably see the person has used uh, ML ops tools, they used about ML flow, DVC, all those information are specifically written. This person, okay, he implemented this, he did this, uh, and he had just ex explained in that terms. And the other person had explained completely end to end what exactly he did, what all ML ops tools he used, what all deployment techniques he used. Everything was explained in a better way. The project was same. So which one did you do you like? The other one, right, where you have more and more explanation. Similarly, that happens with the technical interviewer, right? Whenever the technical interviewer sees all those information, he will definitely ask questions from them, right? Highlighting the points which are important, which are not important. That is also really important. So when you are also explaining the project, make sure that the technical interviewer will like those kind of terms. If someone has written, hey, AWS EC2 instance, if someone has written about Docker, if someone has written about Kubernetes, and they have highlighted that point, then definitely I will like it. So the conclusion of this specific point is that try to explain your project in a better way. Make sure to talk about all the things that you have used and always do the highlighting of those words. As a technical recruiter, I would like to see MLOps. I would like to probably see about Docker's. I'd like to probably talk about uh, deployment, GitHub action, how we probably automated the entire project with respect to the deployment. And obviously the kind of modules that you have actually developed. So all those information needs to be specified in the project explanation. And again, that day I did not see much information about the project explanation also. Okay. So that is really important. These are some of the key points. I've already taken so many different live sessions in resumes and all. So 
I think uh, you can just go and check Krishnaik resumes and you will be able to see I have selected some of the amazing resumes and already it is there in my YouTube channel. Now the next thing that many people were missing were their portfolio link. They were putting the LinkedIn, they were putting the GitHub, you know. So whenever I talk about portfolio, it was GitHub, LinkedIn, all this information. Whatever link you put, right, it needs to be completely updated. Okay, completely updated. And let's say you're putting GitHub link, right? Your contribution should be there. Recent contribution, you know. Many people GitHub link I opened that was updated one year back, six months back, you know. So don't do that. <clears throat> Whatever information you're writing with respect to your portfolio link, make sure you have that completely updated with all the information, with all the projects. And in all your personal projects also, please make sure that you update the readme file. This is also really important. Without this, it will not look good. So whatever portfolio link you are uploading, please make sure that it is basically updated. Okay, it is important. This is just a straight talk to talk about a lot of mistakes that you actually do. Because at the end of the day, sir, I'm not getting a call. Why? Because these are the specific mistakes that you're specifically doing. Some other people are able to get call. Some other freshers are able to get call. Why you're not able to get call? Because you're lacking in this specific thing. Okay. Coming to the next one is with respect to the open source contribution. Open source contribution, if you are doing anything, if you are running a community, that would also add a very good point. Okay. Let me talk about my previous company, Panasonic. Okay. So Panasonic, in Panasonic, when I went for the interview, I told them I already have a YouTube channel. I'm contributing. I'm teaching people. Along with that, I ha I'm also writing a book. As soon as they saw, heard about writing a book, they were really, really happy to hire me. They spoke about the book. What topics have I actually covering in the book and all. Right. So open source contribution is valued in most of the companies and there are many many companies who are actually building open source things right so that would definitely be helpful here you are focusing on community building here you are focusing on multiple things so this is really very really important with respect to the open source contribution now one amazing thing that i saw in more than 95 percentage of the resume is about the goals and outcome this was really amazing the goals and outcome was updated in almost every resume. That is the best thing because in previous sessions of my resume, I have stressed on this specific point about goals and resume and goals and outcome. What are the goals and outcome? Like what were you able to achieve? Achievement from the project. Okay. Achievement from the project, right? Achievement from the project. This was really important. Like what you are able to achieve and many, many people were able to write this what are the goals that they were able to achieve right because of this 90 percentage of the things got automated because of this the part model performance improved you know so this kind of goals and outcome what they really want to achieve right so overall this were the major points that i was looking for in most of the resumes and they were around hardly 10 percentage of the resumes which are satisfying with respect to all these points but you have all these things updated trust me it will be a very amazing thing uh, definitely a game changer and all right now many people will specifically ask for templates and all guys chat gpt is there google gemini is there just go and ask okay for roles and responsibilities i want to include this 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 please try to explain me in this way i've done this particular project how to write this particular words project explanation i've developed this 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 modules you know tell me how should i probably go ahead and develop for my how should i write it for my resume just go and search you will be able to get all the information over there right so this is really important and these are the major points that i have seen so i hope you like this particular video uh yes in this upcoming weekend again we will do those kind of live resume review session and i hope uh, you'll enjoy that so we'll try to do that in the weekend on sunday as well. but these are the main key points that you should really focus on before we proceed okay so yes this was it from my side i will see you all in the next video thank you take care